crispy around the edges, soft in the middle, and gooey and melty chocolate. That's a chocolate chip cookie right there. I've said it before and I'll say it again, I'm not the world's best baker. I know very little about baking. I say I follow a recipe pretty well, but in terms of understanding kind of all of the little things going on, I'm working on it. And the way that I learn is by doing, right? I have to pick something, I gotta try it out, maybe screw it up, fail a little bit, and then learn that way. And so I thought, what better way than to sort of figure this all out than to make some of these great recipes that are out there and sort of use them as learning tools. Certain recipes do certain things for a certain reason, and that's why they turn out good. And to learn about baking, we sort of have to do that process. And so today we're gonna learn how to make one of the most American pastries there is, the chocolate chip cookie. And we're taking the recipe from Jacques Torres, which is a famous French pastry chef and chocolatier. And so over time, I'm gonna make probably lots of different chocolate chip cookie recipes and learn how to figure out how to make my own and how to come up with a baking recipe. I know how to make a savory recipe, but a baking recipe is quite different. So let's just jump right into it. The first trick here is that Jacques Torres does not use all-purpose flour, and this is one of the reasons why I wanted to try this famous recipe. As Jacques Torres states, all-purpose flour is good for everything and good for nothing because it kind of covers a wide basis. It's good for everything, but, but there's usually a better way, and what Jacques figured out is that if you use a combination of cake flour and bread flour, then you can sort of dial in your ideal texture. Cake flour has a low protein content. Protein equates to gluten when it comes to flour. So the lower the protein content, the less elasticity you're gonna get. So it's gonna be much more tender like a cake where the bread flour is the things we use for like pasta and for bread, things we want a little chew and elasticity in. So we have that as well and we use a, a blend of 50-50 using a combination of these. And I've waited so long to do this recipe because it's taken me about three months to get both cake and bread flour. So I know it's not really the easiest thing to find right now, but like I said, this is more of a research thing for me. And if you can f sort of figure it out and find yourself the two flours, then you'll be all set to make this recipe. So we're just gonna sift these two flours together in a bowl real quick. And then here I have some salt, some baking soda, and some baking powder. All the ingredients are gonna be listed in the recipe down in the description, so make sure you go check that out. So we're just gonna sift those as well. So now this is our dry ingredients. I'm just gonna give it a nice mix to combine it all evenly. When you do mixing in a bowl, you like to spin the bowl while you're mixing. If you're using a spatula or anything like that, use kind of the, the turning of the bowl to kind of help you incorporate things easier. Now we set this aside. I've got two eggs here I just need to crack. We have our eggs ready over here. The next ingredient that's a little different is instead of using the little chocolate chips, we're using these baking discs and these have a 66% cocoa. You want it at least over 60% because then these will actually melt. The chocolate chips, they kind of don't really actually melt. Like they'll get melted, but they maintain their shape. Whereas these will melt into the cookie. It sort of creates this much more rustic, in my opinion, more appetizing looking cookie. So we're gonna use these. So now this is sort of just like any other cookie recipe. The real main difference is the chocolate chips and the types of flour. Other than that, you know, it's basically the same process as a regular cookie recipe. And the first stage is creaming the sugars with the butter. So right here we have some brown sugar and some granulated sugar. Those combinations kind of create like a, cri a crispy and a chewy kind of contrast. So the edges might be a little crisp, the center might be chewy, and you're getting like these different textures in one cookie. So these go in 
break up that brown sugar a little bit. And then I have this room temperature softened butter. Now this is a, a point of variability. I've been making cookies that have brown butter, where you, you make brown butter and then you add that in. And that creates a whole other flavor component to the cookie, which may be an aspect I incorporate into my final cookie recipe eventually, but for now we're gonna keep it pure to his recipe, which is just using softened butter. And then we're going to cream them together for a good five to seven minutes. So just add that in. And you can use a stand mixer or you can use your good old hand mixer. We're just gonna start mixing. He instructs to use a paddle attachment on a, uh, on a KitchenAid. So if you've got one of those, then feel free to use that. It's probably a bit easier. I'm gonna add one egg at a time, incorporating each one until it's fully mixed into the batter. And then I'm gonna add the vanilla extract. And we're gonna slowly start to add in the dry ingredients. Now you don't wanna work this hard. You wanna get it in, barely incorporate it, and then stop mixing it. We don't wanna to start to work in gluten. I'm just gonna try and incorporate a little bit by hand. So we just finished mixing it by hand. It's come together, everything is ready to go. Now we're just gonna add our chocolate chips, incorporate them into the dough, and then we can move on to the next stage, which is gonna be letting the dough mature. The next trick that Jacques does is he matures the dough, meaning he allows it time to sit in the refrigerator to have the flowers absorb, the ingredients kind of mingle, and more flavor to develop. You don't have to do this process. You can now kind of go in and start to bake them. But what I'm gonna do is roll these out into balls, then put them in the refrigerator. You could keep them in, this, in the bowl and then refrigerate, but it's gonna be that much harder to kind of scoop out later. So I like doing this ahead of time. So we're just going to get a sheet tray with some parchment paper, roll out some big balls, and then throw them in the refrigerator. I've got this little, um, this ice cream scoop kind of thing. And the cookie scoop is usually a smaller scoop. I wanna make bigger cookies. These chocolate chips, I think, are better when you make the dough ball or the cookie ball a little bit bigger. Otherwise they start to edge up. Like if you roll a small ball, it's kind of hard for the chocolate chips to find a place to be. But if you have a big ball, it's a little bit easier for them to sort of find a place to sit. So we're just gonna roll balls like that. And then as a final touch, before we cover them and put them in the refrigerator, we're gonna sprinkle a little bit of this flaky salt on top of each one. And there you go, we got a nice batch of these. What I'm thinking are gonna be really good. These look really amazing. I can't wait to cook them. I know you have to wait a little bit to do it, but I think part of the delicious aspect of this is that we're going to have to wait and that anticipation is gonna make them much better. Put this into a fridge, go overnight, and we're gonna bake them off in the morning. So into the fridge, see you tomorrow. Here we go, it's day two, and I must say, 
All day and night I've been just thinking and salivating of these cookies. Crossing my fingers that they're gonna turn out, but they look good. I really just wanna get them in the oven. I wanna get them cooked. I wanna taste them. So that's what we're doing now. We have a preheated 350 degree oven. We're just gonna pop these guys in. And the way that I spaced it is, these are pretty large cookies. These are probably double the size of a normal cookie, so I need plenty of space. So I did this sort of alternating pattern. So hopefully none of these guys end up touching each other, which I don't think they will. So into the oven. These are looking pretty good to me. A little mistake over here, that's fine. I need to let these sit for like a good 10 minutes before I'm able to kind of pull them off the sheet tray. We'll get another batch of cookies in the oven. I don't need to make more than 10 cookies, so I'm gonna take the rest and I'm put them in the refrigerator when I want a fresh cookie. I just bake me a fresh cookie. I like it better like that. Mm. This batch came out nice. Now the goal is to pull them out when you can just start to see the ridge of the cookies begin to brown. So it's like you can see a little bit of brown and in the center is a little bit more pale and that's sort of what you want. Okay guys, this is straight up the best cookie I've ever had. Why? I'm sure we used good chocolate and it actually melts into the cookie as you can see. And so you bite into it and you can almost hear it like. You've got a crunchy bottom and crunchy edges, but the center is really soft and gooey as you can see. It's not like crisp. So you have three different textures. Crispy along the outside, a little softer on the inside and gooey in the middle. And the texture, like I've said before, is the key to a lot of deliciousness. The flowers make a difference. The chocolate makes a difference. It's just a pretty incredible cookie. Oh man, I'm in trouble. I needed a good chocolate chip cookie and this kind of ex surpassed my expectations by a long shot. So I plead with you, make this recipe. Do backflips to get the bread flour and the cake flour, give it a shot. Of course you could try it with all purpose flour, but man, I'm just going to town on cookies right now and I can't stop. Anyway, thank you to all my patrons scrolling up on the screen right now. Thank you to everyone who watched. That's all I have today. I got cookies to eat. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself.